So for all of you guys listening, um, this is this is our first LinkedIn Live together, but first of many, and we're so excited if you're watching us live or if you're watching us later on the on the replay welcome to beyond the page uh, Jennifer and I thought it would be a beautiful opportunity for us on two ends of the country to come together for a coffee chat on all things books on all things authors on all things writing and publishing and marketing and everything that many writers or people who have a message that they want to share. Many influencers um, would be lo would love the opportunity to ask people about. And so we wanted to do that for you. So Jennifer, hi, good to see you. Hello, good morning, good to see you. I <laughs> good morning. There... Able... Yeah, go yes, ahead. You, you've got, oh, half an hour left, right? Well, it's still morning for you. <laughs> yes, I was going to say, I've got 30 minutes left and then I don't know, am I still allowed to have coffee in the afternoon? <laughs> Yes, you can, can have coffee as long as you'd like, as long as it doesn't keep you up. My cutoff is 3.30. If I drink coffee after 3.30, I don't sleep. So I try not oh, to I love it. too much. I love it. So when we were thinking about the name for what this weekly video, our LinkedIn Live would be, um, and by the way, I see Jessica, she is over in the UK. She's commenting in here and she says, we sound fantastic. And Jessica, I oh, love good. seeing you. Maybe one day you'll have to join us, Jessica, um, for our little chat. We would love that. Um, but I am curious since we, we talked about meeting because at this time, because you, it is, what time is it? 8.30 your, in your world? Yes. 9.30 mm -hmm. your world? 830? Yep. 8.30. Okay. 830. So, so she's early and I'm at 11.30. Um, and so we thought we would meet for coffee, chat all things book stuff, uh, and share it with y'all. So what better way to like meet for a virtual coffee than to share each other's coffee mugs? So I want to see yours, Lovely. my friend. What's yours look like? I just, I have this pink, you know, with the, it's oh, like this embossing. Beautiful. I have, there's a blue and a green. I think they're from Costco, but they're just cute. And uh, my little okay. Earl Grey tea tag, because I've switched mm. from coffee to Earl Grey already this morning. <laughs> oh, nice. So I don't drink coffee either, but I do have a love. Well, you drink coffee. I don't, I'm not yeah. a coffee girl, but I do love a good coffee shop and I do mm. love a coffee mugs and I do love the smell, but I am a chai tea latte girl all the way. Mm. Love it. <laughs> and my I mug, love that. my Oh, my mug today is my prey mug. Um, I love this mug. I take it like it's got lots of mo it movement to it. Like it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. And it reminds yeah. me about how prayer's not perfect, how I'm not perfect, how life's not perfect. And there's just something about this mug that when I touch it, like I just feel whole. <laughs> Who would have oh, known a I coffee mug could do that? I love that. I was at a uh, bridal shower and they did uh, a tea. And she had all this collections of wonderful teacups, all sorts of little, you know, collection, not, nothing matched, which was so wonderful. Oh, yeah. And I love a cute teacup, right? But it doesn't hold as much. And I'm always afraid I'm going to break it. So I do tend to, even though I have teacups, I tend to go with the mug because yeah. there's just something about that sturdiness and all of that. And then I don't have to keep getting up and refilling it with my right? cute little teacup. So. Right. Well, and I'll tell you next week, next week, I might be not having chai tea latte. I've been making a switch, Jen, over to hot water with lemon. Interesting. Amazing. Ama Is it amazing. good? Amazing. Cool. I never I have a lemon tree in my backyard. That, that would be a no, you don't. Lemons. I totally do. You have to come see. Yeah, can you ship? Well, maybe we'll do one of these live one day <laughs> together. That would be amazing. Drinking hot lemon fun. water with lemons out of your backyard. <laughs> And I'll bring tomatoes out of my country yard. So I'm based it. in Kentucky. For those of y'all who don't know, I think it's important to share because the y'all comes out occasionally. I'm here in Kentucky and I live on a farm. And Jennifer, what part of California are you in? I'm in Southern California. And so uh, depending on, yeah, I never know what people know, but I'm not that far from Palm Springs, but I'm not quite in the desert part of Palm Springs. I'm more in the mountain mm -hmm. part. So I'm far enough away that I'm still kind of in the, the edge of the mountain. So. We do Ooh. get snow. We had snow last week. So. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, I love California. My favorite kind of snow because it snowed all day and it was so pretty and it melted. And I didn't have to shovel it. I didn't have to ice anything. I didn't have to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy the pretty the and none of the work. 
<laughs> that is the best kind. Um, I homeschool my kids on top of doing book marketing stuff. And we just learned about climates. And because what you just explained, my, my homeschool mom brain goes into um, school mode. It's We live in a temperate climate where we get to enjoy all the seasons. And so it is really lovely when you get to see something beautiful, but you don't have to deal with all of the leftovers that snow can, <laughs> can do. Well, Jennifer and I, even though we've never met in person, um, we live, you know, many hour flight hours away. We have really bonded on this topic of authors and the power of books. So when we started thinking about what, um, what we could do together and what a LinkedIn life could look like beyond the page made sense to us because Jennifer comes to the table from a editing book coach perspective. So she's helping bring people to the page. And as a book marketer myself, I take people once that book is written and help them share their message beyond and afterwards. So we thought what a beautiful kind of convergence of two unique perspectives uh, and, and something every author needs. So we just want you to know as individuals who might be thinking about writing or have written, uh, maybe concerned or questioning what the publishing option is and how do you do that? Like we come to the table with lots of insights and we want over the course of the several weeks, months, years, who knows, this could be like a long lifetime friendship that's virtual. We meet one time in person. Um, we want you all to ask questions. What do you want to know from from experts in this industry. And we, we wanna normalize that for you. So today though, we thought it would be a great topic for us to talk about why should you even consider becoming an author and thought it would be a fun little way for us to share a little bit about why we made that choice. Jennifer, I wanna start with you. Like tell me what, what, and A, not just why should you become an author, but we need to celebrate. You just published what number book? Number 16 on yeah, number Monday. 16. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we're not talking about a newbie here. She knows what she's doing. 16 books and the number 16 just came out. So share with us, share with me, I love hearing this, about um, why, why did you become an author? Wow. So, I mean, I was one of those kids who was always writing stories and love stories and people um, would say, you know, what do you enjoy doing? And it's like, I love reading. And um, yep. I remember as a kid thinking, if I could just get paid to read all day, like that would be oh, my ideal the job. thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And essentially that's what I get paid to do now is I read all day. <laughs> okay. Um, that's amazing. You wanted to grow up and read all day. I wanted to grow up and pack groceries in the grocery. <laughs> that was my, that was my goal. I'm going to be a grocery clerk. <laughs> Quite a talent, though, to packing the grocery bag correctly. There is. And there is. <laughs> <laughs> I have it. <laughs> yes. So I think it has, you know, of course, publishing has changed tremendously. Mm -hmm. um, the advent of indie publishing has opened up options for people who yeah. would not necessarily be an ideal traditional publishing client. And my background is traditional publishing. And uh, so I understand what they're looking for in the traditional market, why they need, they have overhead, they have investors, they have, it's a, it's a product that they need to be able to market appropriately and get a return on their investment for. Yeah. With indie publishing, the overhead is quite a bit less. Uh, you have the ability to hit some very niche markets and you don't have all of those uh, gatekeepers and that overhead necessarily. So that has really revolutionized, revolutionized uh, publishing and opened it up to a lot of people who um, I think there's something like 80% of the people would love to write a book, but so few, yep. less than 1% actually do. And the reason is it's a lot of work. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. But I tell um, mm -hmm. professional women and men, of course, all the time that there's a lot of opportunity in the business world where a book could really help you out. If you do yeah. any speaking at all, having a book for people to pick up after you've finished speaking is a great way to continue that connection. Um, mm -hmm. it, even just for many business people, I call it the $10 business card. You yep. can hand it out to somebody. Um, you don't necessarily have to sell it, but you can hand it to somebody and they understand that now that you're an expert, that you have some authority. It's a gateway to lots mm -hmm. of other opportunities. You can if you're tired of saying the same thing over and over to all your clients, right? You can give them the book. These are my, 
best thoughts on how I do my business and things that I want you to know, foundational things you need to know for us to work together. So there's a lot mm-hmm. of reasons beyond just um, having a book as a self-expression um, for business people yes. to really get a, a good uh, return on their investment for their time and their money in writing a book. There's a lot of great business reasons for it. Yeah. I mean, I think that I'm a big believer that books have power, whether you're in fiction or nonfiction. Um, right. You know, I tend to support nonfiction authors and marketing their books because I understand the business mind and how we yeah. can help make that pivot. But I also am a massive consumer of fiction and love it. Mm-hmm. And and so from the from the person that loves to read, I know that books have power because life is crazy. Life is crazy. Yeah. It's, we were just talking about this before we recorded or yeah. went live, how crazy life is. We all need an escape. And I think this. I think books are a very healthy es- escape. So from a consumer, they're a healthy escape. And I'm a, I'm a, a continuous learner, and I love that books can do that for me. Mm-hmm. I also think, and I've shared this before, if anybody's listened to my podcast, that books build bridges and break down walls. There's something about being able to talk about a message that could be controversial or people don't understand or whatever. And there's something about how books allow you to get a deeper glimpse into somebody without right. the defensiveness that could come with it. I just love that power. But why should you, so that's, that's why, I mean, obviously consuming books are awesome, but like becoming an author, um, I'll tell you, I never wanted to be an author. That wasn't like, um, on my bucket list. It wasn't something that I, I I love to read. And I wrote, I did a young authors thing when I was a kid and I looked back and that's really cute. Um, I, you know, so I liked those things, but growing up to becoming an author, I think I just never thought that it was a possibility. Um, and and in secret, I started writing just as a cathartic outlet. I actually wanted to be an actress. I don't know if you even knew this about me. And I didn't know I, that about you. I think you mentioned that one time. Yeah. Yep. I could and, totally see it too. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I couldn't get rid of the ah, the, the letter I say an ah instead of I. And that felt too <laughs> odd. And I just realized if I can't get rid of the Southern accent, let's pick a different field. So I went into PR, which is much like acting anyway. <laughs> anyway, yeah, there you go. Um, but I used to write monologues that I would then share and, um, in my um, auditions. And so that was how I started you know, enjoying writing. Um, but I, I didn't go down that path. I went in PR and marketing and several years in, I started, I, I see it. Look, I said it the right way then. Um, I started to um, write in silence behind closed doors as a cathartic outlet and through a very serendipitous series of events. And because I shared my prey mug and um, I'll, I'll share here, obviously very, a very God moments in my life happened that pushed me to write a book. And when I wrote it, I mean, it was, it was so emotional to me because it was, um, it wasn't something I thought I wanted to do, but it became something I needed to do because I felt like there was something heavy on my heart the world needed to hear that could change them. And the day that um, my book came out and a couple months later, there was a, there was a, I got a text in the middle of the night from a lady who had bought a copy of my book, who was in the thick of a massive anxiety attack. Mm-hmm. And she picked up my book as she was crawling into a closet, having an anxiety attack in the middle of the night. And my book was on her Kindle or a Kindle, a Kindle or in paperback. I can't remember. I think it was Kindle. Um, and she said it within 15 minutes, she could breathe again. She said, your book saved me. And I, I think that's pretty extreme. I, even when I today think about that, I'm like, I don't know if it saved her, but, but she said it did. It changed everything. And that's when I realized it's so much more than the book. Like the book is. is a tool, but we all have a message. Everybody has a story. I'm not saying everybody's story um, makes sense to become a book because I don't, you know, it's a, it's hard. Like this is not an easy journey. Um, right. But if it is a way that you feel like you could share a message, I know that there's power in it, like, and how it can change people. Um, it Because I wrote the book is why I have a business now that I, I never expected to either be an, be an entrepreneur either. <laughs> like, right. you know, me neither. the book put me there, right? <laughs> and look at where we are, you know, yes. enjoying the entrepreneurship of life. And, um, and, you know, somebody shared with me once, if you, if you see yourself as a thought leader, or if you're looking to build a business, or if you're looking to help people in some way, there's one thing, it's one thing to say, oh, that's the person who spoke about it. It's another thing to say, I'm the person that wrote about it. And now I'm sharing it. 
So I think that the book levels people up a little bit. It's true. And in a world where there's so many, everything is kind of sound bites, right? It, and you think about social media and everything is very short. And it's yep. so easy to be misunderstood or to really not have the space to fully unpack an idea. There's mm-hmm. something about a book that really allows you to go in depth with those, to take things um, in a deeper way. And then also for people to be able to come back and refer to it. Um, because sometimes you can read a message in a book and it's, it's fine for where you're at, but later on, you're, you're like, wow, I remember that, and, and you reread it, and it has a deeper meaning for you. And this can be, it doesn't have to be um, a book that is meant to be, you know, emotionally powerful. It can be a business book. It can be a book mm-hmm. about how to handle your finances. There are times where just different things will strike you at different times, and there's this wonderful um, Neil Gaiman quote about the magic of books, that they are this... Um, pieces of trees with these black squiggly lines and somehow those things allow us to transport into somebody else's mind and experience Mm -hmm. the same things that they are experiencing. I mean, it's true. Books really are very magical and there is just something wonderful and powerful, not only with fiction. Fiction we expect to be taken on a journey, but nonfiction as well can absolutely take us on this amazing journey to improve our lives, to make our lives better, and make the lives better with other people. And you can't get that in any other format other than a book. No, and I don't know about you, but there, but my experience with books go pretty daggone deep. Like it's not just, it's not just. I don't know. I I can't get to the Kindle. I'm not a Kindle girl. Like please don't make me look at a book on on a computer. I want to touch it. I want to feel it. I want to smell yeah. it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I found out later that there is a um, there is a specific cancer <laughs> that librarians are prone to because of the the old pages and <laughs> what happened. Yeah. Anyway, so it's a good thing I, I didn't go that. that. Yeah, I mean, but I love to smell it. I love to look at the pages. I love to feel it. There's this experience that I get with a book. Uh, when my husband and I were dating, we would on Friday nights. Everybody else was going out and doing other things. We would go to the bookstore and just <laughs> just sit yeah. in there. He's not as much of a reader as I am, but he knew how much it brought me joy. Um, and you know, so I think when I think of a book, I think of the experience that it provides yeah. me. And and especially in these times with you know the last couple of years being. Um, thick into COVID and travel is not as easy to do. I love to travel, love to travel the world. I feel like books allow me to still travel. Like it still allows me to see other things and experience other people. And the more I can experience, the better, more well-rounded I am. And, and I believe that with others who consume the written word. Um, it's just, I don't know. I just freaking love it. Jen and you know um it's and, the best, and right <laughs> it is the best and it's not just the best like both of us as authors writing and sharing but I have so much joy helping authors spread their message as I know you do in helping yeah. authors create it in this way like there's yeah. just a beautiful joy in birthing a new book <laughs> it's like yeah. a new baby it's um it, it it's is something in many amazing. ways Except mm-hmm. that you send it out to go to work right away. You don't, wouldn't do that with an actual child. That's but. true. We need to write a, a blog about that. <laughs> about how books are like babies, but they bring you money quicker. Like they're not, a, yeah. they, books are like babies, but they don't <laughs> rob you of your money for 20 years. <laughs> right. Hopefully not. Hopefully, you Hopefully not. If you do it better. right. <laughs> That should be yeah. our new opening or closing. That would be really funny. Um, but it's it, that you're so right. Like immediately upon its birth, it can go out and start working for you, working yeah. with you, alongside you. Um, and hopefully over the next several um, months or how, like I said, however long you and I continue to have these lovely virtual long distance coffee chats about books, um, we can dive into more about how a book can work for you. Um this is really good. We've got a couple people talking in the chat. I don't know if you can see it, but Kenneth Wood Woods agrees that smelling books is totally a thing and you must do when you purchase one, like a hundred percent. I agree. When you were talking about the library, uh, I was just thinking, you know, uh, I spent a lot of time in the library growing up at a small town and it was literally one big room, but I literally think, what is it like walking in the doors? And the first thing I noticed is how the library smells. Right. Mm-hmm. It's there's, there's mm-hmm. that combination of book and ink and something mm-hmm. else, whatever, probably dust. I don't know. <laughs> there's just something <laughs> about it 
that's fantastic. And it just brings back memories. And we know that smell mm-hmm. is so closely as- associated with emotion. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think those of us who have such positive early associations with books, it's going to be a positive thing. But I encourage people, and I often work with people who are like, I'm not a reader. I've never been a reader. I might be more of a math person or something like that. But they do still uh, are able to still write a book. Like it's not, um, especially in right. the nonfiction world, it's a skill right. you can learn. You can yep. learn to communicate through the written word just like you would learn to do speaking or to do acting or to do any of the other ways that we communicate with people. Yep. There's absolutely ways to do that in the written word. So many people say, well, I'm not a good writer. Well, that's okay. We can fix that. Like it's all fixable. Everything is learnable. And yep. in this world where you can Google everything, I tell people a lot of time it's like drinking out of a fire hose. There's just so much information coming at you and you don't know what applies to you and what is correct and what isn't correct. It's just a lot. And so what you do, what I do, we really help people through the whole process because there is there is a process as you want, depending on what your goals are, what you want to accomplish, from the time mm-hmm. you are thinking about writing a book to the time you sent it out to the world and continue to promote it, you're going to want to have a specific plan of action that mm-hmm. will actually involve your piece and my piece as well. Mm-hmm. So marketing mm-hmm. and editing and writing are not separate things. They actually are occurring simultaneously throughout Agreed. the whole process, which is why it's so fantastic that we've connected because we're like, yes, we're, we're, we're on this journey with our authors together. And that is just so fun. It is, there's nothing more exciting. Mm-mm. Maybe, maybe having my own book come out. But other than that, I love having other people, working other people through the process, mm-hmm. especially people who do not feel like they are an author, but they feel like they do have something to say, that there's something important that they want to share with the world. And yep. seeing those light bulbs come on as they go through the process and then seeing it go out in the world and they're getting the response back and people are saying, thank you, this was so helpful. I so needed to hear that. Having that come back, it's just it can be very life-changing for people. So I always mm-hmm. tell people, if there's even an inkling that you might want to write a book, there's a good chance that you have something that's important that somebody else needs to hear. And along those yeah. lines, sometimes people say, well, there's already another book on that subject, or there's already Ugh, something else. That somebody else has already done it better. I'm like, but nobody has your voice, your experience, yes. your thoughts, your way of saying things will resonate with somebody in a different way than whatever other book is already out there on the shelf. There's just, that big of a need of people that you can touch that somebody else can't touch. And if you don't write that message, then somebody is going to miss out on hearing that. Yeah. And you don't know if that person needed it. Like if that was game changing in their life. The other thing you said, it just, it triggered something in me that I think is good advice for anybody considering this. Um, you're, when we talk about the power of a book, I'm not talking about the power of a 400 page book or, and how that 400 page is any less, more powerful or less powerful than a 50 page, right? I'm talking about the, we're talking about the avenue of sharing the written word and the impact that makes. So for some people, that's a mini book and it's a mini yeah. digital book and that's okay. For other people, it's yep. a massive trilogy. Um, for some people, it's an academics, uh, you know, book for, I mean, it, it goes everywhere, right? And that's okay. So I don't want you to feel like you immediately have to compare yourself to another author and, and that is the level of success, right? You get to define that right. success. But if, if you have a message that you feel like it needs to be shared and you feel like people could benefit from it, the written form of writing, publishing, sharing the world through a book could very well be exactly what you need. Um, and, and more than that, what somebody else needs. Uh, I, I, whenever I work with others, that's the big shift I try to help them realize is, um, the, there's a difference from being a writer and being an author. Uh, I feel like when you're writing, there is, you have a a bit more flexibility in writing what feels good and feels good to you and what's empowering to you out in the world. But when you become an author, you make a shift from realizing that what you've gone through, what you're experiencing, what your thoughts are, um, what your story arcs are, all of that have the power to help somebody else. And the shift comes into making sure you care about the reader along the way. Um, And I think that's something that's important to consider if if you find that you have a message and you know that message has a power to help somebody else, then that's where I think 
the, uh, the world of author and authorpreneurship may be a, a place that fits into your life's path. <laughs> Absolutely. That's exactly it. You have something that can help somebody else, and that is powerful. And most people don't realize or they underestimate what they do have to share. And the mm-hmm. world is missing out as long as you're not sharing that with them. Uh, yes. So how do you share? So we thought it would be fun uh, as we wrap up each week to highlight an, a book, an author, something, maybe someone we're editing or working on marketing work with or a book we're reading um, with you. And and this week's my week. You get next week, girl. So you be thinking of who right. you're sharing. <laughs> uh, but I am reading the book, The Lazy Genius by Kendra Love Adachi it. or Lazy Genius Way by Kendra Adachi. She has a podcast too. That's so lovely. Her voice is like butter. It's just so smooth. <laughs> and she's just a really awesome human. Maybe, maybe one day she'll listen and we can meet her in person too. (laughs) I'm just in the power of meeting people. Um, but this morning I was reading a chapter of hers that's called start small. So she focuses on her, her kind of MO is all about, um, you can be a genius or you can be lazy or you can mix the two. And if you're a lazy genius, you're going to focus on the things that matter and you're going to ditch what doesn't like, so be yeah. smart about the things that matter and be lazy about the things that don't. And so she gives you the principles on how in life can you be more intentional by focusing on the things that matter and letting go of the things that really don't matter. And today the, the message she shared with me through her book is the power of starting small, um, mm-hmm. small steps can go a long way. And I think if for authors, this is really big, right? Like yeah. whether you're in the writing process, listen, you want to become an author, you have to write. You have to start you the do. writing. So just sit down and write. And maybe your goal is to write a paragraph a day. Great. One day yeah. you'll be an author. Um, yeah. If marketing is overwhelming to you, awesome. Maybe it is sitting down and doing one social media post. That's it. Just start. Just start one small. Thing. So she, there was a quote that she shared that I thought was brilliant that I wanted to share. And it's um, and it says it's an image that has helped her view view life differently from feeling like I have to do all the things to figure out I can do small things to get there. And it's from a social reformer, Jacob Riss. It says, when nothing seems to help, I go and look at the stone cutter hammering away at his rock, perhaps a hundred times without as much as a crack showing in it. Yet at the hundred and first blow, it will split in two. And I know it was not the last blow that did it, but all that had gone before. Mm-hmm. And as That's we're true. thinking, right. And as I, as we're thinking about the power of what a book can do and being an author, you know, I want those listening today to realize just start small. And it's about small, consistent movements. I believe that, you know, you would agree it's small, consistent movements that get you to the publishing. And on my end, it's small, consistent movements that help your book work for you over the long haul. So, um, that's my tip of the week. Start small. What is it. one small thing that you can do? Um, I love it. I know, right? I don't know. What's something small you're going to do? Oh, my word. Hmm. (laughs) Something small. This. This is, although this this may not seem like a small thing. It's a little, we've been doing things for a while. So we can be, our small things can be a little bit bigger because we have these years of habits that we've developed. But this is one of the things I think is a perfect example. Uh, Stephanie and I talking about this and saying, well, how can we share our knowledge with other people? This is a great way to do it. And so we're mm-hmm. very excited about having this happen as a regular thing. Um, I mean, any excuse for us to get together and talk about books. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> like, this is not painful at all. So, no, um, and have a like virtual cheers, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yay. Right. Anytime we can get together and do it. That's awesome. I'm thinking about my small step. I am working on book number three and next week I'm taking myself on a CEO retreat. And so my starting small will be figuring out and I, and I'm not going to wait till then I've been working on the book, but, um, maybe it's to sit down even for 10 minutes a day and just look at what I'm doing and figuring out how it connects because, the book needs this message and the, or the world needs this message and this book. So maybe that's my start small challenge. <laughs> you can hold and me accountable next week. I, you know, and I tell people this all the time. Um, my book that I wrote on writing a book is called Eat, Eat mm-hmm. the Elephant, how to write it. and finish your book one bite at a time because it can be overwhelming. And so I yeah. tell people, just look at your manuscript once a day. Just open the mm-hmm. computer, just have it in your thought, just jot down some ideas. Don't put a lot of pressure on yourself that, oh, my gosh, I have to write a thousand words a day to get through this. Just get the ideas, get the habit, do the small. When you do that, you'll reach this critical mass where the words will start pouring out of you. But you need to have the habit 
to get it done. And, uh, you know, um, in our um, business mastermind that we're in, Six Figures yeah. Lab, we talk about the Colby and if you're a mm-hmm. fact finder versus a quick start. And so both of us uh, in the, 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 the pitfall of that is the idea that we want it to be uh, perfect or we want to mm-hmm. take off. We want, we have all these things, both of us that we create as obstacles around ourselves. And mm-hmm. so this is what I love about the lazy genius way is it's just a small thing. Just mm-hmm. take those expectations down, take the perfectionism down, take all of the ideas of this is going to be this huge, wonderful, life-changing thing. It can be, but in the moment, we just need to start small. And I think that that is fantastic. Yay. So challenge for all those listening now, live or later, start small. Make a commitment to yourself. Even comment in here if you want us to hold you accountable. Yeah. <laughs> Next week, we'll yeah. see if you did. Um, right. But we're so glad that you tuned in. We hope you join us next week. Next week, we will be meeting on March 8th, which happens to be International Women's Day. And we're really excited about what we're going to be talking about. So we'll be posting that so you can um, attend and join. But we're going to wrap up by just sharing this. You know, listen, authors, your words have power. Your books have power and so does your message and you're bigger than your book. Your book is a conduit for your message. So all of that has power and we just want you to embrace that power. And we really are inviting you to take that message to the page and beyond. I feel very, um, um, Buzz Lightyear saying that, but I'm a believer. (laughs) To the page and beyond. To the page and beyond. (laughs) Oh, it was so much fun uh, great chatting. Great celebratory music in the background when we say that. We absolutely do. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> um, thank you for joining today for those listening. And um, and I hope you join next week. We'll, we'll see you then. Cheers. All right. Cheers. <laughs> Bye-bye, everyone. See y'all.